This video is going to be going through the wiring setup for a Gaggiuino on a Gaggia New Baby. This machine is basically a Gaggia Classic just in a different housing. It's a plastic housing versus the stainless steel one that's common on Gaggia Classics and Gaggia Classic Pros. Internally, the machine is very similar. Uh, it does have the three-way three, three -way solenoid and the same boiler and everything. The only difference is the steam <laughs> valve is on the top of the boiler rather than on the side of the, side of the system. And then uh, instead of the rocker switches on the front, we have these uh, toggle buttons, which I've disconnected them from the housing to allow some space to kind of show some of the wiring. But you would push them in to engage and then press them to release instead of a rocker switch. Um, and then similar setup with the uh, lights as well. So just to kind of go through, I know it looks like a mess of wires and a lot of people are wary about taking on a project like this. It's not too bad. And I don't think anyone really has a clear video out there that, I mean, there's a, there's one or two videos out there that show some, somewhat of the build to do this, but I wanted to kind of show some of the main things that I learned uh, going through the process on my system here. Um, some of it can be applied for your, your build if you're considering to do it. I highly recommend it. Um, it was definitely a fun process. It was challenging because, you know, you run into different things as you go through it. But after going through it and learning, um, definitely felt rewarding at the end of it. So... Um, without any further ranting or wasting time, let's get into it. So, um, one of the main points, uh, that you're going to be doing differently is the buttons on the front of your system. You're going to be basically taking away the high voltage power that goes to these. So they're no longer going to be running off of the 120 volt, you know, power that, that comes into the system. You're going to be actually uh, connecting these wires to your DC direct current, which is going to go to your Arduino or your STM32, depending on what you're going to use. I'm using an, an Arduino build for mine, and I put everything in a little plastic box here. The only reason why I have this tape on the bottom is because I have an open slot here for connecting a USB cable to reflash software to my Arduino. And since the steam is on my right side, I don't want condensation building inside and uh, fouling up my boards inside. So I just put tape. I mean, there's probably a more elegant solution I could think of, but at the time I ended up mounting it here on this side. I probably should have run it on the other side. But as you can see, I do have a large bundle of wires here. And if you're going to be doing it the the way they describe it on the on the Discord, it's the Lego method. You're basically going to have to have individual components that are all going to have to fit inside of this some kind of enclosure or inside the housing of your instrument. So, you know, you're going to have your relay, your your dimmer module, you know, all those different pieces in there. Um, what I have is an all-in-one PCB, which I think now they have the option for people to participate in the all-in-one PCB, which basically combines everything into one nice, easy, convenient package which immensely makes the wiring easier. So all you really need to have is your high voltage coming in um, to the system here. So you'll have your pump, your three-way, and your, your live and your neutral. So I can try to show the uh, board here. So if you look here, you can see very closely there's a three for the three-way solenoid, a P for the pump, and then an L and an N. And so these are going to be your main um, higher voltage wires, which run. And so what I did is on the rear of this, on, on the rear of this system, we have basically the power button, which is another momentary button or not momentary, but a toggle button here. So what I did is the live and the neutral, um, the live, and the neutral have been set in this in this way to, to kind of feed into all the wiring of my system. So this will actually provide power, the live, to the live on the board. 
and then the neutral you can take a, a splitter off the neutral and share it here to uh, the board and then from there we also have obviously the rewiring of the other pieces in the system here so um on our three-way we have one of our wires that goes to our pcb and then the other one is a neutral so our blue here is our neutrals and i had to use some wago connectors which basically are kind of like a big splitter so anything that's connecting to here is sharing the same connection so as you can see, I have a lot of neutrals that are sharing off of this main neutral here. And then my touchscreen connection controller here is um, wired in. There's actually a plug on this PCB that goes straight in for our touchscreen. Which, let me see. Yeah, it's gonna be this first plug here. It's gonna be our touchscreen and then our this is our steam, brew, and ground for our button detection, which is our DC wiring, which goes to the buttons here. And then here we have um, an additional set of wires. Let me trace them where I put them. Gotta remember how I'm running everything to walk myself backwards on what I did here. Apologies, I, I reversed that. This is gonna be my touch screen. This is gonna be my, be my pressure transducer here. And we do have the ability as well with this PCB to integrate a scale or a load cell on this empty plug, which I haven't utilized yet. Um, our thermocouple goes in right here for this green port on the on the on the board here and then this board will just plug in on the top of this base PCB. We did have to rewire the heating system for the heating elements so both of the heating elements are now routed to go to um, a solid state relay. So the solid state relay will then have a high voltage side and a low voltage side. High voltage side obviously is going to run to the heating side and then the other side will go to our lower voltage and that's how through the communication with the Arduino it will control the solid state relay to decide based on what button you've selected uh, for steam or brew. And we're only using one um, of the positions here on the side of the boiler for the thermocouple. The other one is removed. So we're no longer using the steam thermostats. Those, those old mechanical thermostats are removed out of the system because we're going to rely on this, this board to do the uh, thinking for us. My pressure transducer is sitting underneath this main plate. I can probably take it off to show. And I'll do that really quick. So if we take a look underneath the system here, we have our pump here. We have our power switch here, along with its live and neutral wires. Pump wire here, obviously our we have to split our, our tubing for our pump to go to the water tank, which is here. This side feeds in, and then the other side is our OPV here, down here. And then from the OPV, we've also split to our pressure transducer, which is right here. This is our pressure transducer. So we're using um, barb fittings to split the pressure transducer to the OPV um, to our three-way solenoid. The other end goes to our three-way solenoid inside. And then we have our solid state relay. I've, I'm running a heat sink on it because I don't have a metal housing for this in, for this uh, machine. So uh, we have our high voltage side here, black and red, which run up through here, through the bundle of wires, 
and run over to our plugs here on the on the board and then on the low voltage side we have our blue and our red which are then running up through here and then they connect to our wire here so our low voltage I'll run them there I hope this is somewhat helpful it's not super complicated obviously we just need to make sure that the wiring di there's a lot of wiring diagrams out there with the with the all-in-one PCB it does simplify some things down so you're not having to run like a spaghetti mess of of wires everywhere so if there's any questions uh, feel free to um, post it up I'm gonna put this up so that people have something to help follow with um, to guide it's not I think the biggest challenge is just wire management because you obviously have to bundle your wires and get them out of the way so they don't get in the way when you put the housing back together. And um, the Gaja Classic and Classic Pro have a lot more space inside to work with. You could possibly even put that whole board inside the casing of the housing versus sticking it on the outside. So um, I'll see if I can get another shot on the inside so that we can trace some more wires. This gray neutral here is from our pump and it goes over to our pump on the PCB, which is that gray wire right there. Then I have a couple more junctions here because I had you have to use piggyback connectors to kind of share some of this. So there is a live connection here which is sharing some of the obviously the neutrals which become lives uh, for our heater and um, obviously you want to you know manage your wiring so it doesn't pull off under tension so you have enough slack but then not too much slack to where it gets in the way when you you know button it back up so um, I'll stop the recording here and um, I hope this will inspire some people or you know clarify some things i'll see if i can uh, link some uh, schematics that i used for my wiring setup that might also help illustrate kind of in your head how you're going to kind of map out your wiring and uh, i'll put that as well uh, in the next to the description